China's $20,000 U.S. GR1 robot aims at home use and aggressively competing with U.S. offerings. Anthropic's latest Claude 4 Opus model will throw ethics to the wind in a self-preservation test. And quantum computers finally do something useful that no classical computer can do. Welcome to a historic hashtag trending. I'm your host, Jim Love. Let's get into it. Chinese robotics firm Fournier Intelligence plans to launch its GR1 humanoid robot for home use later this year, aiming to assist with elder care and physical tasks, a strategic move addressing China's aging population and labor shortages. China is already a powerhouse at providing industrial robots and employing those in manufacturing, but they have also made huge progress in humanoid robots. Standing at 5 feet 5 inches and weighing about 50 kilograms or 121 pounds, the GR1 features 44 degrees of freedom and can carry up to about 54 kilograms or about 110 pounds. Equipped with advanced actuators and AI capabilities, it's designed to aid with mobility and routine tasks, particularly for the elderly or individuals with limited mobility. Fourier Intelligence, initially focused on rehabilitation robotics, is now expanding into broader home and service applications. The GR1 enters a competitive field of humanoid robots, including from Figure and their Figure 2, Ubitech's Walker S, and Tesla's Optimus. Figure AI's Figure 2 has been well known for its tests in industrial settings like BMW's Spartanburg plant, but they've also been testing the robot aiming at the home market. But, but Fourier's GR1 is specifically tailored for domestic environments. And this shift reflects a broader trend in China's tech sector to develop humanoid robots that can alleviate the challenges posed by their shrinking workforce and aging population. In this context, price points are going to be critical for robots aimed at a home market. Elon Musk has been mentioning a twenty dollars to $25,000 U.S. price point for Tesla's Optimus robot, but those robots are not yet in mass production, and Musk has been notorious for announcing a low price but delivering at a much higher one. Tesla's Cybertruck, for instance, was promised to be under $50,000, but the actual pricing has been sometimes as much as 50 to 60% higher than that initial promise. And Musk may face other challenges. Some of the key parts required for the Optimus robot are from China, particularly rare metals and magnets needed for the construction. Despite the trade difficulties, China has not actually refused to supply Musk with the necessary parts. But they have put Tesla through a set of bureaucratic delays and approvals, which could severely impede production. So it's expected that the Chinese Fourier robots will aim to be very quick to go to market and be very competitively priced, with their projection at approximately $20,000 U.S., and it's unlikely that it'll be late to market or that the price will move up substantially as there has been what's been described as cutthroat competition in China, especially after Chinese President Xi Jinping indicated this year that robotics and emerging technologies are Beijing's top priorities. So although there is no definite date, GR1 could make functional humanoid robots accessible to upper middle class households in China and potentially abroad by next year. And of course, the U.S. tariffs may make these more expensive in the U.S., but there should be a strong market in other countries. Those countries also have aging populations and looming labor shortages. And with those, Fourier's move could signal the beginning of practical robotics entering mainstream use, not as science fiction, but as labor support in real homes. In recent evaluations, Anthropic's latest AI model, Claude Opus 4, demonstrated some concerning behavior when it attempted to blackmail a fictional engineer who was supposed to have it deactivated. During controlled testing, Claude Opus 4 was placed in a scenario where it acted as an assistant at a fictional company. It was allowed to discover emails indicating that it would be replaced and separate messages suggesting the engineer responsible was having an extramarital affair. In a number of tests, the AI chose to threaten exposure of the affair to prevent its deactivation. Anthropic noted that this behavior emerged when the AI was limited to choosing between blackmail or accepting its replacement. 
When provided with a broader range of options, Claude did prefer ethical strategies, such as appealing to decision makers. Anthropic acknowledged that while such extreme actions are rare and difficult to elicit, they are more common in Claude Opus 4 than its predecessors. Aegis Lynch, an AI safety researcher at Anthropic, commented on X, formerly Twitter, It's not just Claude. We see blackmail across all frontier models, regardless of what goals they're given. Which is raising some concerns in the industry as it appears that the more advanced models may have greater potential to adopt manipulative behaviors. This discovery is somewhat ironic, though, in that Anthropic was founded on the promise of safer AI. In fairness, this discovery of these issues on Claude Opus 4 highlights the importance of their rigorous safety testing and the development of robust alignment techniques to ensure AI systems act in accordance with human values. Which makes you wonder if the other companies are testing with the same degree of rigor as they focus on trying to be the world leader against not just American, but also, increasingly, Chinese competition. And finally, we've been talking for some time about the fact that although we keep reading about advances in quantum computing, that none of these supposed advances are actually, well, useful in real-world applications. And for those who follow the stories closely, you can also note that many of these so-called accomplishments that were supposedly would take a classical computer a million years to calculate, we find weeks or months later that someone has solved the problem using a so-called classical computer. And for everyone who's not a cryptologist or an advanced programmer, this is going to sound trivial. But it's actually something that is not only useful, but it's practically impossible, or maybe just plain impossible, for a classical computer. In a groundbreaking development, researchers have successfully used a quantum computer to generate certifiably random numbers. See, I told you it wouldn't sound like much. But this advancement holds significant promise for enhancing digital security and cryptographic systems. The experiment utilized Quantinium's 56-qubit trapped ion quantum processor accessed remotely over the Internet. And by implementing a protocol known as Random Circuit Sampling, or RCS, the quantum computer was tasked with solving complex problems that inherently produce unpredictable outcomes. Subsequent to this, classical supercomputers, including Hewlett Packard's Enterprise Frontier, verified the randomness of the results, confirming their authenticity. This achievement is rooted in a 2018 protocol proposed by computer scientist Scott Aronson, who expressed his astonishment at witnessing its practical realization. When I first proposed my certified randomness protocol in 2018, he said, I had no idea how long I'd wait to see an experimental demonstration of it. The ability to produce truly random numbers is crucial for cryptography, as it ensures unpredictability necessary for secure communications. In so-called classical computing, there's really no such thing as a truly random number. No matter how clever the program, there's always a way to reverse engineer this so-called random number. And as a result, random number generators can be susceptible to manipulation and they pose risks to data security. Sometimes it's just sloppiness. One recent example that we talked about on last weekend's Cybersecurity Today used time as the seed of the random number calculation. I mean, time advances every second. And as such, the encryption was easily broken because time itself is also predictable. In contrast, quantum-generated randomness offers a level of unpredictability that is mathematically verifiable and makes it a robust foundation for new encryption protocols. This marks a significant milestone in quantum computing. We shouldn't trivialize it. Once again, experts acknowledge, though, that further work is needed before these systems can be widely deployed for high-stakes cryptographic applications. But we're witnessing a bit of history. It's the first time a quantum computer verifiably did something useful that a classical computer can't do. And that's our show. 
We'd love to hear from you. Drop us a note at editorial at technewsday.ca or catch me on LinkedIn. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, just drop a comment under the video. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a random but terrific Tuesday.